Well, good morning, everyone, Macaulay family. We're so happy to be able to uh, join you all this morning in worship. We hope that you're joining us online, wherever you're watching from. We want to welcome you all this morning. And we're just going to start this morning with some worship. So we hope and pray that you all will join us this morning. <laughs> Thank you. 
to meet in your presence, Lord God. Your word says where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. Lord, I pray that you would have your will and way in our hearts, Lord God. We pray that you would just uh, meet with us, Lord, wherever we are this morning. Lord, we just praise you. We thank you for all that you, you've done, Lord, and all that you've going to do, Lord. We know that you are in control. Lord, we surrender. Lord God, we turn this service over to you. Speak to us through your word, Lord God. We ask this in Jesus' name, I pray. In the name that is above every name. Amen.
Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here in Macaulay Baptist Church and wherever you are. And uh, let me say, we've gotten some uh, text and some things saying uh, YouTube's not working, and so I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, we will, uh, we're recording this, and we'll have that on there later. I'm sorry that that's not working with all the technical issues going on. And so I hope that you're able to see either by Facebook Live. And uh, check back our website later, and we'll have that on there, and we'll also have it on YouTube Live. And so I'm sorry about that. Sometimes technology, we just uh, uh, can't uh, uh, deal with that or something's going on. We don't know exactly what's happening. Uh, but I'm glad that you've joined us today, and uh, thank you for uh, attending church today online, and we're glad to see all of you today. And uh, let me say that we're praying for each of you. Uh, in these uh, difficult, unusual times, I pray that you're all well. We've been praying for our church family and just asking God to keep you safe and uh, during these times. And I hope that you are abiding by uh, staying in and uh, uh, just quarantine, staying away from uh, the sickness. And we're praying that you will be safe and you will be well. Uh, let me say this, it was a joy to see our church family gathered this morning by many different groups uh, that had our small groups were joined together, our adult Bible fellowships, and I saw some of uh, uh, our junior class uh, Sunday school teachers had created some videos with lessons on it, and if you have not seen that, I hope you can go to the uh, Kids Ministry Facebook page and get to that through our Macaulay Baptist Church Facebook page. And take a look at those things, and uh, I know that Miss Irene, our children's director, has posted some really neat things there uh, for our kids ministry, and I hope that you're all gathered together, and I want you to do this. If you're gathered with your family, and you say, well, Pastor, I'm in my pajamas, that's okay, but why don't you uh, take a picture of your family gathered there, a selfie or something, and post that. Uh, underneath the comments there as you're watching this today and uh, that would be cool to see uh, how our church family is worshiping together today uh, I'm not sure how long we're going to need to do this uh, we're just praying that God will enable us to be able to gather again together for Easter Sunday I'm making that a huge matter of prayer I hope you will too uh, but we just have to see uh, how things go and uh, wouldn't that be awesome we could gather together for Easter Sunday on April the 12th and just worship the risen Savior all together. So I'm just praying, asking God for that, and we'll see what happens as that goes along. And uh, again, I'm praying for all of you today. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 is uh, a verse that I want to bring to you today. I have quoted this verse more times in the past couple of weeks than I've ever quoted this verse uh, in my lifetime, I'm probably sure. But the Bible says that in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. And today, let me give you for just a few minutes, I want to talk to you about this subject, facing your fears in faith. Let me tell you this, God knew that people would have all kinds of fears in their lives. That's why fear not is really one of the most frequently repeated commands in the Word of God. And faith is the opposite of fear. Did you realize that? See, God doesn't want us to be fearful, but let me tell you this, our enemies want us to be fearful. Uh, how, how do we defeat our fears? You defeat it with faith. Because faith will overcome our fears. We must face our fears with faith. You see, let me tell you this. Listen, when our faith is stronger than our fears, we will not live in defeat. We will not cower in fear. We won't be afraid to move. We won't be afraid to face the challenges and the things that we have in our lives. I realize this, that fear has stopped so many Christians dead in their tracks before they ever get started in their Christian walk. I think the one thing that keeps many from achieving God, what God wants them in, for them in their lives is that one word, and that's fear. It's the fear of the unknown. 
It's the fear of, God, can I really trust you with my life? Can I trust you, God, with my family? Can I trust you with my marriage? Can I trust you, God, with my finances? Can I trust you, God, with my health? You see, listen, to conquer fear, you must have faith. So, Pastor, what is faith? Faith is, Hebrews 11, verse 1, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So today, I want to I talk to you about facing your fears in faith. But before we kind of get into a few points that I want to give you, and I hope that you have some sermon notes there, boys and girls, that I hope you've downloaded some of those and you're sitting with your family and following along. There's some great things that even our younger congregation can know. But before we get into this, let me give you five facts about fear. Number one, fear-motivated thoughts are all about this one word, can't, can't. Thoughts of fear create a negative and, a, and an imagined scenario about the future. In reality, you don't know what's going to happen, but that's where faith steps in. I don't know what happens tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I'm hoping and praying we can be together again Easter Sunday, but I don't know. But you know what? By faith, I'm just going to trust that God's going to take care of everything. So fear-motivated thoughts are all about can't. Number two, resisting fear actually strengthens fear. And when you're aware and you resist your fear, it will only strengthen your fear. You see, when you try to resist fear, you end up mar uh, making your fear just grow larger and larger. That's where faith steps in. You say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm trying to overcome my fear. I'm just not thinking about it. You know what you're doing? If you're resisting it, you're strengthening it. You have to trust God. And here's what you got to do. I told you this last Sunday. You got to roll over your care onto the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to trust God and turn your fears over to God Almighty. Number three, the goal is not to get rid of fear. Because let me tell you this, you do not have the power to make this happen. Fear is a part of life. It's a part of our sin nature. We do not have the power to rid fear out of our lives, but we do have the power to change the way that we relate to fear. Did you hear that? Well, that's so very important. Number four, fear is not the enemy. Fear can be the voice of reason and caution. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 10, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, that's not a, oh, I'm afraid of God. It's a reverential fear of God, and that is good because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Number five, it takes energy to resist fear. You can't sit back and let fear overtake you. You can't, let it, you can't just sit back and let fear take your mind and everything. You have to stand up and you have to fight against the giant of fear and you have to overcome it. But let me tell you what, you cannot do that in your own power. You need the power of Almighty God to be able to do that. Let me give you some thoughts. Number one today, learn to face your fear in faith. Learn to face your fear in faith. You see, listen, listen. Faith helps you to see beyond the circumstances. Faith helps us to focus on the possibilities uh, instead of the dangers. I think we all have a little fear these days. We all have that. Older, senior adults, and, and, and uh, median adults, young people have fears. Boys and girls have fears. And you need to learn to face your fear, but face it in faith. So you say, well, what is facing your fears look like? Well, let me give you some thoughts. And first of all, let me give you what facing your fears does not look like, okay? It doesn't look like this. Facing our fears does not mean ignoring the obvious. You see, some may think that facing a fear means that we, are, uh, we need to pretend not to be afraid. Well, I'm a big man here. I'm not afraid of anything. You know what? We have to trust and take a step of faith and see what God will do in us and through us. That is what we're talking about today. One of my favorite books in the Bible is Paul's letter to the Christians at Philippi. I love 
uh, reading through the book of Philippians. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, let me remind you of this. When we face our fears in faith, what it's not, is not ignoring the obvious. What's going on in your life is a part of God's plan for your life. But never forget what Paul told the church there at Philippi, Philippians 1 and verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You see, if God began a good work in you, God's word promises that he's going to finish what he started. Amen to that. Aren't you thankful today that God is going to finish what he started in your life? He's not going to cut it short. He's going to complete and give you an expected end, as it says in the book of Jeremiah. You might say, Pastor, I'm not afraid or fearful of anything. Then why are you so afraid of surrendering every area of your life to God? Every area of your life. Hold on, listen for a minute. I'm talking about your life. I'm talking about your marriage and your family, your finances, your time, your talent. How about this one? Hold on a second. How about your health? Surrendering that to the Lord. Do you think God can take care of you? Now listen, I'm not saying, well, you know what? I can go out here and I can mingle with everybody and go to the grocery store and touch every object and everything and not ever wash my hands and none of that. Let me tell you what, you're going to get the virus. You've got to trust the Lord, but you've got to be smart about it. I'm telling you this, you've got to surrender your life to God. God can take care of you, but you need to continue to do what you know to do. And I know that surrendering everything is a very difficult task. But it's the only way possible to take down the mountain of fear that you're facing today. Here's another thing that fear is not. Facing our fears with faith doesn't mean that we fail to plan. I want you to listen to me for a moment. See, you look at that and you should be thinking, well, what should I be doing to deal with the things that I am facing in my life today? What, what should I do? You know what you need to do? Put together and plan a strategy. Whatever that might mean. What are you facing today? Maybe it's financial difficulty. What are you putting into place? You know what? God will take care of his children. But you know what? You need to be smart. You need to uh, put a plan together. And, and you know what? Most of all, more than anything else, this is what you and I need to say. You need to say this. I will not let fear dominate my life. I will let fear be my motivation. Well, that makes a big difference. And then we see facing our fears does not mean that we are going to ignore the past. You see, fear will many times stop us from moving ahead because, you know what? We might start to remember what a certain thing or a certain someone did to us in the past. So what we tend to do is stop and do nothing when we should be moving forward in faith and, and, and to move uh, forward and attack the mountain of faith in your, uh, fear in your life. You see, facing fears doesn't mean that we run ahead without applying the principles of our past experiences. You know what? Our past experiences, they've taught us a lot, haven't they? We should use our past mistakes and we should use our past experiences to help us make wiser choices in our life. Let me give you an illustration here. Using the marriage relationship. You see, marriage is a relationship that is built on trust, right? Right? Let's say that in the past you had a difficult experience with your spouse that caused you to maybe lose trust in them because of something maybe they did or something they said. Now you're afraid to trust them. You know what is the right thing to do? You trust them and show them the love of Christ. But I understand. But you're fearful, right? So you should trust God and use the wisdom that your fears are pointing out to help guide you as you move forward in that relationship. See, what I see most often is that fear can easily destroy a marriage relationship. Take, for instance, the case of mistrust. You know, fear should destroy a relationship. It should just put the relationship on better footing. You see, we gain wisdom from our past mistakes, don't we? For what happened before. You see, fear is actually a great tool whenever you use fear the correct way. What are some good thoughts about fear today? So number one, learn to face fear in faith. Number two, learn to turn your fear into fearlessness. 
Let me ask you today, what, what does facing our fears look like? You know, I gave you some things of what facing our fears doesn't look like. Let me give you some things of, face, of what facing our fears does look like. Here it is. Number one, facing our fears in faith does mean that we need to take biblical action. Biblical action. You see, as a child of God, when you get saved, you receive the Holy Spirit of God that comes and makes residence inside of you. The Holy Spirit inside you tells you what actions you should take against this fear. I love what David said about fear in Psalm 56 and verse number 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Boys and girls, if you're watching, what a great verse. Uh, I heard one of our Wana kids quoting that verse uh, through a video this past week. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. A great verse to hide in your heart and to bring that up when that fear begins to settle in. Psalm 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You know what, David, in his writing, he gave us a pretty clear instruction as to what action we should take when we are facing fear in our lives. You know what you do? You trust God and you seek the Lord. Did you hear that? Trust God and seek the Lord. Here's another thing. Facing our fears in faith does not mean that we should give God, uh, excuse me, it does mean, I almost said the wrong word, it does mean that we should give praise to God instead of focusing on our fears. Let me tell you this. When you give praise to God, your fears will flee. They'll flee. What is obvious is that so many times we get focused on our problems, don't we? Uh, the virus, you, that's all you hear. That's all that you may be thinking about. The, the news media, the horror stories and such. So many times we get focused on that that we completely forget that God is mighty and he will deliver our enemies into our hands and he will deliver us from this virus. And we forget that God is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. And if we would only trust in him with all of our hearts and remember this, listen, God has the power to do anything for with God, nothing is impossible. You see, the news media will say, well, you know what? This looks dire. This looks bleak. And, and, and you know, all of these things. And you tell me, you need to go to God's word. And you need to read this, that God, with God, nothing is impossible. You see, God has the power to take this away just like that. God has the power to heal and, and, and uh, to sustain us. I love David's courage. David, in his life, in the Old Testament, remember this, that he faced the bear and the lion. He also faced Goliath, the giant. How in the world would this man, who was such small in stature, become such a mighty man of God? I think we find the secret of David's courage in the book of Psalm, in chapter 63. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3, the Bible says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Wow, what wonderful verses. David's courage over fear was found in what? It was found in his praise unto God. Every time David became fearful, he would start praising God. And in the midst of his praise, he would find the strength that he needed to help face his mountain of fear. And let me tell you what, if you're fearful today, you just start praising the Lord. And that mountain of fear will flee. Here's another thing. Facing our fears in faith does mean that we should trust God for the results. Did you hear that? You see, one of the reasons why I become fear-filled and, and sometimes paralyzed in certain situations is because I'm not always sure what the outcome of what my obedience and trust may bring. And listen, it's okay. You may think, well, what if I die or what if I lose everything by facing this fear? You know what? The outcome is God's business. 
Your days are numbered on this earth. Our job is to simply follow and obey God and leave the results to Him. you got to have trust. You have to have faith. And you know what the old hymn? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. You see, joy and happiness in Christ comes when we take our faith and by faith and, and uh, trust in God and place our faith in Him and be obedient to Him. What great words for us today. Let me ask you, what fear do you have today that's keeping you from accomplishing all that God has for you? What fear are you facing in your life today that's causing anxiety, that's causing you to lose sleep at night, you see, God desires an abundant life for you. God desires for each of you to be blessed beyond measure. But let me tell you what, fear is keeping you from achieving those blessings from God. There's some of you are watching me today that, boy, I tell you what, you need that mountain of fear to flee. You need to overcome that. And you cannot do it in your power and in your strength. You got to turn it over to the Lord. And you got to trust the Lord by faith that God is going to take care of it. Maybe today you need to conquer that fear. Today you need by faith to face your fear. Faith is believing in what you cannot see. You see, we cannot see down the timeline as to what God is going to do about all that all of us are facing today. But we must have faith to believe that God will do as He said He will do. We must trust God for the outcome. Face your fears with faith. You can do it. Let me tell you, listen. You can face your fears in faith because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is, who is in us that, that gives us the power to do it? Let me remind you, the Holy Spirit of God who enables us. And we can say... I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. You see, it's Christ that's giving you strength. Let me tell you today, and I'm going to close. It all starts with Jesus Christ. See, it all starts with Him. Do you know the Lord is your Savior? If you were to die right now, do you know that you would go to heaven? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us that salvation is a free gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of life, of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, you can't work for this gift. Uh, you can't, you can't uh, buy it. You can't pray enough prayers. You can't do enough good. Let me tell you today, Jesus Christ provided the gift of salvation when he died on the cross. But we must each individually receive that gift. John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me ask you, have you been trying to earn your salvation by good works? If you could do anything to earn salvation to heaven on our own, then Christ wouldn't have needed to die. <coughs> Excuse me. You see, the price has already been paid. All you have to do is receive the gift. Let me ask you today, are you saved? Have you received the gift of salvation? If not, you could do that today by praying the prayer and asking the Lord to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior. If you're here and watching and you would like to be saved today, it's as easy as ABC. You see, all must admit that they're a sinner. We're all sinners. Admit you're a sinner. B, you must believe. Just as Brother Mike's saying, you've got to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Believe that he was placed in a borrowed tomb. And the third day, he rose again. He's a risen Savior. And he died on the cross to pay for your sins and for my sins. And then C, you must confess Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life. It's as easy as that. You say, Pastor, that's too easy. Salvation is not difficult. So I'm going to pray. <coughs> Excuse me, and as I pray, just pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. 
And Lord, I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And I cannot do anything to get to heaven on my own. And right now, I trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he rose again. And right now, I accept Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you what. If you just said that prayer, the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know what? You're saved. And I want to rejoice with you. If you just received Christ, why don't you comment just down below and let us know. And let us know how we can minister to you better and to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. Salvation is the greatest decision you could ever make in your life. And I'm happy that you accepted Christ today. Child of God, what fear do you need to overcome in your life? Place it on the Lord and realize that you can face your fear with Christ in your life. I thank you so much for joining us today. It's been good to worship the Lord together and to hear from his word. So I encourage you to continue to get into the word of God. Continue to get on your knees and pray. Continue to contact our church family and let them uh, see how they're doing and, and just connect them with each other. And I want you to know this pastor loves you very much and your family. And I'm praying for you every day. That you'd be safe. And God would bless you. I'm praying also that we would be able to meet together very, very soon again. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for technology, but it's not the same. It's not the same as just being able to see everyone. But we'll do this as long as we have to. And I know the Lord is going to take care of this. I'll tell you this again. If you need anything, please let us know. We're here to minister for you. Contact us here at the church. If you have special needs or anything that we can do, please let us know. We want to minister to you and your family any way that we can. God bless you all for being here today. I'm going to end in prayer. Thank you for being here. Father, thank you for the time together today. Lord, we need you. Lord God, we need you now more than ever. And Lord, I pray as your word says that we would draw close to you. As we draw close to you, God, you will draw near to us. Father, I pray for each one of these folks that are watching, even right now on camera. Lord, some of our church family, others, Lord, from around the country, even some missionaries from around the world. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon each of them. I pray for their health and safety. And God, I pray, Father, for those even that have acquired the virus. And God, I pray your blessings upon them. Be with them. Be their Jehovah Rapha, their God of, of healing in their lives. And Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, bless us. Thank you for meeting with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Let me just say one final word to you and uh, about our giving. I want, to continue, I want you to continue to be faithful in your giving. Uh, the church is still ministering, and we are dependent upon God's people to support. And so you that call Macaulay home, I hope that you will do that. I put a slide up behind us on some ways that you can give, and I hope you can see that. There are four ways you can give. You can give uh, in person. You can uh, drop your offering by, and uh, there is a locked box outside. You can drop it in there. Uh, you can also mail it to us, 714 Macaulay Avenue, uh, San Antonio, Texas, 78221. Uh, you can also go online, and it says there, macaulaybaptist.org, our website. Scroll down a little bit. There's a place for you to give. There's also a give tab, and you can give securely. Uh, uh, by uh, your credit card, even your ACH, by check. Just put in that information. You can do that also. And there's a text to give there also, the 210-610-1772 number. 
and you can actually go on and text that uh, text tithe to that phone number and you can give that way also I thank you so much church family for being faithful to the Lord and uh, and helping us to uh, remain being able to support everyone in their relationship I can't see that so Yes, okay, my wife is out there reminding me. Tonight, don't forget, tonight our evening service, we're going to meet with you at 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have uh, Sunday night the Quigley, uh, with the Quigley family at the Quigley house tonight, okay? So we're going to do that again, uh, do some hymns and songs for you, and just share just a moment with God's Word tonight. So I hope you'll join us at 6 p.m. Central Time tonight online. And again, I apologize for no YouTube, but we're going to put that on YouTube. If you want to watch it later, you can do that. And let me remind you, anytime, Darren, if you miss this, uh, maybe you're watching later, and uh, comment on that. Let us know you're there. And as we stay connected together, uh, go to the church Facebook page, Macaulay Baptist Church Facebook page. There's all the different groups. I encourage you to go to the kids' uh, ministry group. There's a lot of cool things on there, too. All the Sunday school lessons that were done either, either by Zoom or by uh, Facebook Live today will be on there. If you didn't chance to, to see that early, you can do that then, okay? Have a wonderful day. I'm praying for you. Stay safe. We love you, and have a good day. Bye-bye.